Whether or not you have type 2 diabetes, you should consume due to the fact that diabetes almost doubles your risk of heart disease and stroke. Having fatty acid in your diet can. If you are going to incorporate dairy products in your diet, be sure that they are. If you have diabetes, you know how difficult it is to eat a balanced diet while keeping the blood sugar levels under control. Certain foods raise blood sugar levels while others lower them. But many people must go through years of trial and error before discovering what works best for them and their bodies. Fortunately, I am going to tell you today which foods will naturally superior to others thanks to years of scientific clinical research and my personal experience as a diabetes specialist. So, let's get started. I am Dr. Ahmed Tergen. I'm an endocrinologist dealing with diabetes on a daily basis. So today, I'm giving you the best foods to eat if you want to get your diabetes under control. So, top 10 foods that can help control your diabetes and lower your blood sugar, of course. So if you want to get the most out of your diet, consider diabetic meal planning. Plan ahead of time and prepare your meals in advance to reduce the chances of snacking, number one, and unhealthy eating, number two, because you will also save a lot of time and energy trying to find a good food if you plan ahead. I'll go over the most of the healthy meals, but you should will also visit a qualified diabetes educator at least once to assess your unique nutrition needs. Our team actually have a CDE. He's, she's quite knowledgeable. She is very personable. She's very nice. She can schedule a session with you at least once, maybe a few times to make sure your diabetes and diet needs are met successfully. And that can be found on our website at sugarmds.com at under the Get a Diabetes Coach tab. Number one, I'll start with veggies. So veggies that aren't really too starchy. So if you have diabetes, I'll say non-starchy vegetables are among the healthiest things that you can eat. They will not only fill you up, but they will also provide you with the important vitamins and minerals and so forth. They will also help manage your blood sugars and prevent the complications and inflammation. So, non-starchy vegetables are a complete food with just a trace levels of sugar and high fiber content, so you may actually eat as much as you want without having to worry about crazy blood sugar spikes. Choose fresh, canned, or frozen vegetables that have not been salted or marinated in any sauce or any fluid to get the most nutritional value out of your non-starchy vegetables. So, non-starchy vegetables include a few th of them that I will include here for you. Is artichokes, for example, the asparagus, the avocados. Avocados is practically a fruit, but uh, it has less than a one gram of sugar low carbohydrate, a high fiber content, and a lot of good fats. So you won't have to worry about your blood sugar rising when you eat these things. Avocados also may have properties that actually make them especially useful in the prevention of diabetes. I'll tell you about a study. So a recent mouse study discovered that avocatin B or AVOB, it's a fatty acid molecule found only in avocados, prevented oxidation in skeletal muscle. Oxidation is like rusting in your body and the pancreas, so resulting in quite a decrease in insulin resistance. So what else we have? Broccoli, right? Famous. Cabbage, cauliflower, celery, cucumbers. Beans are practically a legume, but in their green form, you can call it a vegetable. Hearts of palm, mushroom, olives, onions, squashes, tomatoes, zucchini, and there's a lot more veggies out there. There's a lot of veggies with leaves, right? The green leaves, leafy vegetables are there that you can get your hands on that I cannot just list all of them here. But they are all non-starchy vegetables and they are just so many out there. You just need to look for them. When compared to other vegetables, leafy greens, especially that are high in nutrients and low in digestible carbohydrates, what that means is that no matter how much you consume, your blood sugar will remain okay. So, they are strong in vitamin C. So, spinach and kale are two of the greatest leafy greens to include in your daily diabetic diet because of that vitamin C, for example. You don't want to consume more than 500 milligram vitamin C as a, as a supplementation, but if it is in your diet, it actually helps control diabetes. In that 
the one that comes in the diet, not excessively. Uh, leafy greens also contain various nutrients that are very helpful in addition to like antioxidants we talked about. And those antioxidants will protect your eyes and kidneys from complications because as you know, blindness and kidney failure is not uncommon. I hope you are finding this video useful so far. So if you like it, uh, please push the like button, subscribe and write a comment. To let us know what you think. Number two is the fish with a high fat content. Whether or not you have type 3 diabetes, you should consume healthy fats from fish in your diet. It is one of the healthiest meals you can eat. It comes with a long list of benefits. The heart healthy omega fatty acids, such as DHA and EPA, they're present in fatty fish like salmon and anchovies. They provide a significant amount of heart healthy omega fatty acids, which can help protect your heart from diabetes related complications such as heart attacks and strokes. DHEA and EPA protect your blood vessels, they reduce your inflammation, they improve the function of your arteries after eating those things. So, uh, just watching them is not going to really help you. Due to the fact that diabetes almost doubles your risk of heart disease and stroke, Having fatty acid in your diet can really help you avoid these things, man. So, I would go for it even if you're not a big fish fan. To get used to it. <laughs> Furthermore, fatty acids are a great source of protein that can help you keep stay full longer and maintain a healthy diet. So make sure you check out our best and worst fish videos to make sure that you're not eating that high mercury fish too much in your diet. Number three is nuts and eggs. Well, I will say nuts and eggs are the two very high fat foods that can really help with diabetes management. And then the blood sugar control, of course. Nuts are very high in fiber and they're low in digestible carbohydrates, so they will not spike your blood sugar as much. However, you have to be careful about different species of these nuts because they are all different. So some of them contain a lot of carbohydrates, especially high carb with low fiber content. But almonds, the Brazil nuts, the, the cashews, hazelnuts, macadamia nuts, uh, pecans, pistachios, and walnuts are basically the best nuts for diabetics to eat. If you are trying to reduce the weight, keep in mind though that the nuts should be eaten in moderation because of their high fat content which reflects as high calorie content and if you ingest them enough then you will not be able to lose weight. So the eggs are also, that's number four, considered heart healthy unless you exceed the limit. So there's a lot of good fats in the, even in the yolk, they improve your insulin sensitivity and reduce the inflammation. There's choline in there, uh, there's a lot of antioxidants to help reduce the inflammation in your body and the free radicals and so forth. And if you decide to incorporate the eggs, make sure that you at least eat one yolk. But remember, you know, if, if you have high cholesterol, your limit is 300 milligram of cholesterol in your diet, and you're actually getting 180 milligram of that cholesterol from just one egg yolk. So if you're gonna eat more eggs, I would say eat one egg yolk and add more egg whites to improve the, to increase the protein content, unless you have advanced kidney disease, then you don't wanna excessively eat protein either. So most healthy people who do not have excessive cholesterol problem or on statins and their cholesterol is really very good, then you may not have to worry about eggs too much, so eating up to seven a week uh, should be okay. Number five the seeds. The seeds contain certain kinds of, again, substances that are very helpful for diabetes. So two best seeds for diabetes are going to be chia seeds and flax seeds. So chia seeds are high in fiber and low in carbohydrates. And then they also have been shown to help reduce the blood sugar levels. In a, for example, 28 grams or one ounce serving of a chia seed you, that are fiber, which doesn't really increase your blood sugar. So chia seeds, putting, for example, topped with some berries is a great breakfast option that I love 100%. Uh, it's much better than cereal that you can have out there. The flax seeds are also beneficial since they can actually help with the blood sugar control. They lower your risk of heart disease. They lower your cholesterol and chance of stroke. I would also say that choose ground seeds or make an effort to grind your own flax seeds at home to improve the absorption because there's really not much health benefit for eating the whole flax seeds. Number six, the oils. So there's an extensive spectrum of health promoting qualities of extra virgin olive oil we all talk about. All the other 
oils probably be uh, avoided. Uh, there are a lot of antioxidants and anti-inflammation in the olive oil. We have a specific olive oil video as well that you can look into for more details. It's one of the most helpful oils actually for lowering the risk of heart disease. It contains a lot of vitamin E, which is an antioxidant, and uh, a genuine extra virgin olive oil is going to have you go a long way. You can drizzle it on salads or use it in marinades or cook with meats and vegetables unless it's super high heat. So don't fry the stuff in the olive oil, but you can saute and still enjoy your olive oil pretty much in every meal. There are things in olive oil as well that will actually make you excrete insulin as well. So that's amazing. The other natural oils that you can use without too much worry is coconut and avocado oil. So if you're not a big fan of eating avocado, you can actually use avocado oil in your meals. Coconut cream, unsweetened, and coconut milk is also okay as well. I hope you are finding this video useful so far. So if you like it, uh, please push the like button, subscribe, and write a comment. To let us know what you think. Number seven is apple cider vinegar is another great uh, thing to consume. Apple cider vinegar is, as you know, prepared from the apple juice. Again, we have a separate video for that if you're interested in for more details. But for a good reason, apple cider vinegar is very popular among the health conscious people. So it is fermented acetic acid. So when you take that with your carbohydrate containing meals, it will help to increase the insulin sensitivity so you will be able to keep your blood sugar under control better it will lower your fasting blood sugars and then it will lower your blood sugar response to those foods so up to 20 percent less spike so let's say you're gonna go up to 200 when you eat something a meal but if you have apple cider vinegar in that diet in your salad etc you may actually end up spiking up to 180 which is 20 points not too bad it may not work like that for everybody but when it works i think it's worth to consider to consume in your daily foods to avoid hurting your teeth and esophagus because of the vinegar's high acidity, it is also highly recommended that you have apple cider vinegar. You mix it with a spoonful of water or you can just put it on your salad with the mixture of your dressing. You can also just make a juice with it, etc. with other non-caloric juices. Number eight, spices. Yep, the good part. Let's spice it up. Turmeric and cinnamon are the two most commonly used spices for that purpose. So they're powerful tools, especially when it comes to managing diabetes. So in our sugar MD supplement, for example, we have a lot of spices that brings your blood sugar down. So check it out. In order to obtain the best results though, for example, for cinnamon and turmeric, you have to have them in your diet pretty much on a daily basis. So that's why for people who cannot have these things in your in the daily basis, taking a supplement may be okay option. The flavor of almost any food or beverage will be increased with a little kick of uh, addition of a cinnamon. So just keep that in mind every time you're having your coffee or something. It has been tried in several trials and it has been shown to lower the blood sugar levels, improve insulin sensitivity, and lower the hemoglobin A1C levels. But remember, not every cinnamon is very helpful. Salem cinnamon is what has been shown to be really beneficial for diabetes. And interestingly also, we came up with a product called Super Berberine and Salem cinnamon. A Super Berberine is something called dehydroberberine, which is much better absorbed and much better a side effect profile compared to berberine. So we implemented that in our supplement. It is available. And if it is not available at the time of you watching this, it's going to be available the latest in early 2022. So to activate the medicinal element of uh, turmeric in your mixture, uh, you may want to use some black pepper as well. That will also make it even better. Number nine is the probiotic rich dairy products. So if you are going to incorporate dairy products in your diet, be sure that they are high in helpful probiotic to get the most health benefits. Greek yogurt, for example, is a wonderful option. It is uh, low in sugar and high in probiotics. In Clinical trials, Greek yogurt has been demonstrated to improve the blood sugar control, even it lowered the risk of heart disease, which is our ultimate goal. Plain Greek yogurt is preferable to the flavored versions because those flavored options contain a lot more sugar and they're much more processed, which may cause your blood sugar to spike and you may not get the benefit. 
Number 10 and the last one are beans. Beans are low cost, they are nutrient dense, and they're incredibly nutritious. You'll be fine if you don't eat the beans with your rice. So beans are super high in B vitamins, minerals like calcium, potassium, magnesium, and a lot of fiber. Again, if you're not consuming beans with rice, it should not spike your blood sugar because they are low in glycemic index, which is crucial in diabetes management to choose the low glycemic index foods. So keep in mind that a cup of cooked beans equals to one starch diabetic exchange. So that's around 15 grams. It provides about 80 calories and 15 grams of carbohydrates. So you should not have more than three exchange or more than 45 grams of carbs at all. And those carbs should always be low glycemic index, such as beans. So half a cup of bean will be your exchange, which is 15 grams. So if you're having full cup of beans, that's almost 30 grams of carbs. So if you go excessive, any carb can spike your blood sugar. So you have to be careful there as well. So guys, I hope that was helpful. So please remember to subscribe, share, and we'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying this channel so far and I hope you subscribed already. If you didn't, do it. And if you did, watch this video right there. I think that will help you too.